It's already five after, so. Looks like spring break is, we got a lot of people going on spring break. Wow. Okay, let's pray. Father, we're thankful for your blessings upon our lives and your goodness to us. And Lord, we've gathered together uh, just to look into your word tonight and, and some more on prayer. And Lord, also to spend some time in your presence. And so Lord, just pour out into our hearts tonight. And Father, we just look forward to um, getting to know you better tonight as we spend time uh, communing with you. Uh, just bless the time, bless the, the young adults, the youth ministry, the children's ministry has taken place. Lord, all those that are, are gone and uh, traveling in various places, just give them a great time. Also, Lord, just sh- uh, shower them with your protection and your blessings in Christ's name. Amen. Just uh, quickly welcome each other. It won't take too long. And uh, then we'll get into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Friday, the Saturday before Mother's Day, yeah. Boom. be seated. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 17. We'll take a few announcements. This uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock will be a, uh, an Easter musical narrative, a journey to remembrance. And Mark has written and uh, there will be some several songs. Easter schedule next Sunday, uh, 7.30 sunrise service here at the church, 8.30 breakfast. No Sunday school, 10.30 Easter service, and then no evening service on next Sunday night. We do have a leadership meeting tomorrow night. It's not listed in here, but tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here at the church. And uh, other normal activities are taking place throughout the week. Ladies that are going to time apart need to see Donna. And uh, anything else you want me to announce? For their money, turn in their money. And then there's a, there's a silent auction on the 22nd of April, which you can see Dawn about that. Senior Time Ministry has made um, four ounce chocolate covered peanut butter eggs, which are delicious, I heard. Was that you? Yes. And uh, how many do you have left, Barb? I only have about 20 now. About 20 left. So if you're interested in one, see Barb. Homemade chocolate covered peanut butter eggs. And you will need either a gallon of milk to drink with one of them or a couple pots of coffee. One or two. They're rich. Okay. I think that's about it. And uh, we'll begin looking into the Word of God. Matthew 17 in our. I actually consider it a school of prayer. The greatest thing that we can learn in walking with the Lord is our communion. And uh, that's just the same way it is in a marriage, isn't it? Communication is vital. And uh, in our relationship with God, communication is vital. And and prayer is, is, is the main thing. So let's look at Matthew 17. Verses 19, 19, 20. And 21. And this is the, uh, the boy is healed. 
after the Mount of Transfiguration. And um, they're coming down off the Mount and they're having a discussion. Actually, you can read this in Mark as well. We've, looked, we've chosen Matthew tonight for our text. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. When we finish tonight, we're going to spend some time in prayer. And just in case I forget, remind me to take some prayer requests. We do have a, have a couple. Okay, in the 16th verse, I want to go back up to the 16th. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. This is where uh, they struggled with it, and there was, there was controversy, there was discussion going on, and, and uh, then Jesus cast the demon out, and then they're asking this question, why could we not do this? So the father of this demon-possessed boy uh, comes to Jesus saying that, your disciples couldn't do it. And that, that's not a good testimony for a church, for believers. And Jesus casts out the Spirit, and so it caused him to ask this question, why couldn't we do it? Why, why did they fail? And Jesus had already given them authority over unclean spirits, right? As believers, we had it. We have authority over unclean spirits. To cast them out, to, to, to pray for the sick, to see the sick healed, every disease, every sickness. So did, they, did these disciples exercise this power and authority before? They did. Remember, he sent them out two by two. And they came back and said, wow, wow. Even the demons flee in the name of Jesus. Okay, so they exercised it before. And... Now, here, when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, they had failed. So there's something here that's very important for us that we need to know. Jesus cast out the evil spirit, and what this proves to us is that there is nothing in the will of God or in the nature of the situation to make the miracle impossible. How often do we say, well, it must not have been God's will? And you could, we, they could have easily said that in this situation, it must not have been God's will. But then Jesus comes on the scene and, and does it. So that kind of throws that out. And so from the disciples' question, why could we not? It's evident that the disciples had wanted to, right? They wanted that to happen. They, and they tried to cast the demon out. They had probably called upon, upon the demon using Jesus' name. But their efforts had been in vain. They had been put to shame in front of the of the whole crowd. And I think that, that kind of, that, that shame thing kind of holds us back as well. We'd rather not be embarrassed just in case it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> so Jesus' first response to them when they asked this question. Somebody say something? Huh? Oh, Lyric, okay. What do you need, Lyric? <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus' first response to them when they, when they ask this question, go, let's go to verse 20, is what? They ask, why could we not cast it out? What's his response? Unbelief. Is that a direct answer? <laughs> because of your unbelief. Is that a plain answer? We all understand that, right? Because of your unbelief. So Jesus' success was not a result of having, of, of his having a special power to which the disciples did not have access to. Jesus didn't have a special power that they didn't have access to. He had so often taught them that there is one power. What, goes, what does he go on to say in this verse, in chapter, in verse 20? What is that power? Okay, the power of faith. And how big does your faith have to be? Mustard seed. How big is this? Christy, you know, how big is a mustard seed? A dot. 
a dot. A dot is small. Small. And he says the power of faith, and, and, to which in the kingdom of, of darkness, as in the kingdom of God, everything bows to the power of faith. So in the spiritual wor- world, failure has only one cause, which is what? Faith. Lack of faith, unbelief. What, why couldn't Jesus do things in Nazareth? Because of their unbelief. It wasn't because Jesus didn't have the, have the authority, but because of their unbelief. He couldn't do, he did very little because of their unbelief. So faith is the one condition on which all divine power then can enter us and work through us. It's faith. It is, it is a sensitivity of our will Yielded to and molded by the will of God. Okay, So my will needs to be yielded to God's will and molded by God's will. So the power the disciples had received to cast out devils did not belong to them as a permanent gift. Right? If it did, they could have done this. It's not a permanent possession. The power is in Christ to be received and and held and used by faith alone. A living faith in Christ. And living is probably the key word because we can have dead faith, can't we? We can have dead faith. And probably, you know, how many times do we pray for somebody with with dead faith instead of, of living faith? So had they been full... Of faith, obviously, because Jesus says because of your unbelief or because of your lack of faith. So they had been full of faith in Christ as Lord and conqueror in the spirit world. Had they been full of faith in Christ as have given them authority to cast out demons in his name, their faith would have then given them the victory, would it not? Sure it would have. So now the question, why did they have unbelief? Belief is actually can, can be translated faith. Well, a good shot of belief, a good shot of faith, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so closely related. It's probably hard to cut that two things. It's close, so close. Um, it's, yeah. That's so, true. What I understand is, did he, could he not do many miracles back in his hometown because of the lack of, it's just because of what, because of their unbelief. And is it, it makes me think that there might be a difference between faith and belief. And faith. I don't know. There would be, if, if there is, that's, if it is, it's, it's, it's really close. I mean, it's, it's, the definition of the two uh, is, is really close. It's really close. Um, yeah, the, the, the corpse did not have any faith, obviously. He, he dead. Neither did Lazarus when he raised Lazarus from the dead. He had no faith because it's dead. So, you know, it's, there, there's, there's something. The Lord knew what he was going to do in both of those situations. Matter of fact, he didn't raise really too many, but the ones that we know of. So, had they been full of faith in Christ as what, Lord as conqueror, they, this would not have, the failure would not have, have happened. Because of your unbelief, uh, Jesus' explanation here and, and his reproof um, of, of impotence here and, and failure of his church, their, their faith was deficient. Um, and what was the cause of that? that? That's what I'd like to get to. What, what is the cause of a deficient faith? Okay.
okay? There, there has to be a cause for deficiency of faith. Doubt? Okay. Why couldn't we believe? Our faith has cast out demons before. Why did we fail in believing this time? I, I think it's a fair way to put the question. But Jesus answered before they could have uh, uh, answered that. What, what was his answer? This kind goes out by what? This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So, faith is the, can be the simplest exercise of the spiritual life, but it's also the highest exercise, faith. And the spirit must yield itself. And perfect um, receptivity of Christ, hearing him, we've talked about that before, receiving his spirit and becoming strengthened to do that. I think it's vitally important that we spend time in prayer. Isn't that where we receive our strength? In prayer time? Communication with the Lord? Don't, don't, don't you get up when you spend time with the Lord? You know, actually energized? You do. Even worship. Doesn't worship energize you? I hope it does. So, faith, then, that, that faith depends entirely on the state, then, of our spiritual life. Only when this is strong and in good health, when the Spirit of God has total influence in our lives, does faith have the power to, to really move out and do these kind of things. So, a deficiency of faith can be caused by what? Because we've talked about the lack of prayer. What else? Sin, sin can do it, sure. Anybody else? Fear of man. Fear of man. So fear. Fear is a powerful force, isn't it? Anything else? Could our spiritual life be deficient? Can we be sick spiritually just like we can be physically? Or would be sick, maybe not in tip-top shape? <laughs> can, 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 we, can we tend to have a... a um, can we have a tendency to run on on last year's experience with the Lord? Trying to do this year's work on last year's spiritual experience? Is that possible? Okay, so maybe growth. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything before we go on? Okay. So it really, it does. I mean, it just, just like any, any physical exercise or something, it, it needs to be part of our daily routine if it's going to be effective, right? If, if, I, if I, you know, whatever, if I need to change my diet for health reasons, I've got to change my diet every day, not just Monday and Saturday. 
right? If it's going to be effective, it's got to be, okay, I'm going to put this in the same way that I walk with the Lord. It needs to be a daily communion with the Lord. Okay, so let's look at his answer. This goes out, verse 21. This does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So let's look at prayer and fasting. We, we did a teaching on this back in January and February. So the, the, the faith that can overcome stubborn resistance, such as you see we saw in this evil spirit, Jesus tells them is not possible except for those living in very close fellowship with God and then very special separation from the world. Maybe that could be a problem. Maybe we're not separated from the world as much as we ought to be in order for God to flow through us. Can we not get this, this vessel clogged up with things until where the power of God can't flow through us? And oftentimes we think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm good, I'm, everything's good, good. But we can get this clogged up with, with things that we don't even know are there. But I tell you what, when you spend time in the presence of the Lord, um, those things will get revealed, and he, he'll start cleaning those things out. Okay, so, and that's the, the answer to that, the solution to that is prayer and fasting. So he, he teaches us two lessons here of, of deep importance. In, in regard to prayer. And the first is, faith needs a life of prayer in which to, to grow and keep strong. So if you want your faith to grow and you want it to be strong, number one, it must have a life, or you must have a life of prayer. It has to have it. The second is then that prayer needs fasting for its full and perfect development. Does that mean I need to, how often do I need to fast? Whatever the Lord tells you. Whatever he tells you. you don't, don't make a ritual out of it. If you feel led that the Lord, Lord's leading you to fast one day a week, the same day every week, do it. One meal a day, this, you know, whatever. Or maybe only on special occasions. There are some preachers who fast before they do a series of services. They'll, they'll fast before that. They'll, they'll, they'll fast the night before they speak or whatever. Okay, But that's totally between the individual and the Lord. There's, there's nothing secret about that. Just that there has to be a prayer and fasting. That fasting just gives it its perfect development. So let's look at faith and prayer. So there's a close reunion, obviously, would you say, between faith and prayer. A very close re reunion there. And in, in all the different parts of the, of the spiritual life, there is a close union between unceasing action and reaction, so that each you have a cause and effect thing going on. So it is with faith. There can be no true prayer without faith. There has to be some measure of faith. It has to go before prayer, right? What would be the first thing you have faith in? Okay, you have the faith in the one you're praying to, right? You have faith in God. And secondly, you have to have faith that he's what? He's hearing you. Okay, and we can go to the scripture. We, we have all the proof we need. But that's one of those things that Satan wants to attack us on is he's not paying any attention to you. You want to know why? Because you're no good. You know, they didn't throw that out. Because of what you just did last week or last year or whatever. He throw that kind of stuff out. So we need to have faith. Okay, Lord, I know who you are, and, and I know you hear my prayers. And we have to have faith that he wants the best for us. We have to, so there's all kinds of faith. So that precedes the prayer. So, and, and yet prayer is also the way, then, to more faith. There's no, no higher degrees of faith can be obtained except through much prayer. Why, why is prayer, maybe not for, for you in this room, but why, why can prayer be a difficult thing to do? Anybody? Okay. Okay, so time 
And how, what, what's one thing we always say? We don't have enough time. I just wish there was more hours a day, you know. If there were more hours a day, we would waste those too. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so, so time. Would you agree time is probably the, the big factor there? What else? Okay. You can't, it's impossible. And fasting helps us to focus. It does help us to focus. Good. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. So our worship is, is, a, is, a, is a type of prayer, isn't it? Isn't it our worship? Um... We, we've had we have a couple things mentioned here already. Not not asking for things, uh, which is which is good. I, you know, we we've talked about you know the, actually go through the Lord's prayer. He tells us really how to do that, and and looking at some of the prayers of the Old Testament, some of these men prayed when they were in, when they were in drastic situations. You know what they did? Uh, actually, what, what Christy mentioned about the Word of God, they reminded God of what well, when what Barb said of what He had done. Lord, this is who You said You are. You promised this, and this, and this. And, and God can't go back on his word, right? And that's why we mentioned this morning, it's so vitally important that we get a word, a word from God. And that, that, was, that was just powerful this morning and, 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 and confirmed by so many people. We, when you get a word from God, God can't go back on it. And, and so you hang on to that. You, you stick to that, okay? And so nothing needs to grow as much as our faith. Paul told the Thessalonians, your faith grows exceedingly. Man, you want your faith to grow exceedingly? I, that's a great thing to be said of you. Wow, you guys, your faith is growing exceedingly. Wouldn't that be neat if Jesus just showed up on the platform next Sunday morning? and said, you know what, Erie Shores? Your faith is growing exceedingly. That should that would make a shout, right? So when Jesus spoke the words, according to your faith, will it be done to you? He announced here the law of, of, of the kingdom of God, which tells us that different people have different degrees of faith. Isn't that what that means? According to your faith? I shared that this story before, this pastor, large church down in San Antonio, I think it might be his first son of God there, and how that guy came into his office, and, and they were talking, he had problems with, problems with, with, with his marriage and that. And he had, he had gone out and he, he got in a fight and got hit in the face, punched in the face. He came back out. He came back in the office and, and this may be the first time he came in. He had big, his face is all swollen. He said, I cannot go home. My wife <laughs> would not believe. You know, he said, this is just going to cause all kinds of trouble. He said, Pastor, you've got to pray that the Lord heals my face right, right now. And the, the pastor tells a story. He said, man, said, the guy was a new Christian. He said, he said I didn't have the faith for that. He said, could I, you know, how many of us would? He said, you know, wow. And so he said, the only thing I do is, is pray. Because this guy obviously had the faith. He said, if you pray, there's this, Lord, Lord, do this. You need to pray. I said, man. So, so he said, I prayed. And sometimes, you go back to what Christy also said, we don't know what to pray. <laughs> In that situation, I'll be honest with you, I would not know what to pray. And his pastor said, he said, I did not know what to pray. And so I said, he prayed with Jesus, said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. And 
he left. He came, yeah, this is when he came. He came back a few minutes later and said, man, I'm healed. And he was. The Lord just totally healed his face. He did. He had, you know, and there was probably there was a, there was a good reason for his faith. <laughs> he said, I got to, uh, above everything else, I got to have this. Okay, so there's different degrees of faith. And so here you have a newborn Christian who actually had more faith than the pastor. You know, and so the, the, the amount of faith will always determine the amount of one's power and blessing. So with that said, I want more faith. If that means that I have more power and, and, and more blessing, I need more faith. So we need to know where and how our faith grows. So Jesus points, out to the, uh, points us then to the throne of God. So it is in prayer and fasting. It is in prayer. It is exercising your faith and fellowship with the living God that faith can increase. And may another reason be our, uh, we have a hard time praying is because there is a, there is a, the, 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 it's a spiritual warfare in a sense that uh, Satan really does not want us to pray. If this is the result of our prayer, this is the last thing Satan wants. The last thing Satan wants is a church that prays. He don't care how many ministries we have. He doesn't care about that. What bothers him is if we spend time in prayer. That's what bothers them. And so, faith can, can only live by feeding on what is divine. Well, you guys have given really good answers tonight. The Word of God. Our faith feeds on the Word of God. Our faith feeds on God Himself. That's what our faith feeds. So, so I think it's safe to say, if I'm not in His Word, I think my faith may be starving. If I'm not in his word, my faith is uh, malnourished, right? Can we say malnourished? Malnourished. And, 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 and then, then that leads to sickness and disease. And, and so our, our faith needs to be in here. And, and, and so it, it, we, we, we thrive on here in God's word. Feeding on that. It is in the worship of God as well waiting on the Lord and, and waiting for the Lord. And sometimes is a prayer just silence before the Lord? Meditating? The Lord, the Lord you know, speak to me and just in His presence and, and yielding ourselves so God will reveal Himself to us. That, that, that the capacity for knowing and, and for trusting God then is developed. Our, our capacity can increase, can it? Can we become more hungry for God? Maybe one reason we don't pray is that we're not hungry enough. Right? Aren't there some days you, you want to go to a buffet and some days you don't? If you're smart, you'd never want to go to a buffet, but you know what I'm saying. Family style. Okay. Sometimes, ah, man, all I need is a salad. Right? So we've we got to be hungry for, for, for the Lord. And, and as we take his word and, and the scriptures, the promises of his word, and ask him to speak to us, with his voice, his loving voice, and, and the power to believe and receive the word of God's own word to us, that, that, that will emerge within us. It's something that will grow. And, and that's what we need to do. That's why these Sunday night services are important, just are spending time with God. So it is in prayer, in, in living contact with God, in living faith, that faith becomes strong. That's important. So it is in prayer, contact with the living God and living faith, that our faith becomes strong. Uh, many Christians can't understand or do they feel the need of spending hours with God. So many great preachers of the past made comments such as when they were asked how much you know, do they pray, they said, I can't start the day without three hours of prayer first. I think John Wesley said that. It was either him or Martin Luther. I've got to spend at least three hours in prayer before I can even get going. So they, they realized this. In order to accomplish great things, you know, we, we need to spend time with the Lord. And so Jesus says that people of strong faith are people of much prayer. So as we talked last week, week before, we, we must have faith in God. It is God. It is a living God and to whom our faith 
has to take our roots deep and, and broad, then we're going to be strong enough to remove mountains. Mountains, he, didn't say, he said that here? If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And I, I think it's, it's probably safe to say, but, you know, we, we'll be able to say to this, to this demon, move out of this boy and hightail it. Move from here to there. Or whatever mountain may be in your life. Lord, take care of this thing. Okay. And so, if you, if you have faith, nothing. What did he say in the last part of verse 20? And it will move. And what? Nothing will be impossible for you. How many times did you say nothing is impossible with God? How many times have you said? We probably can't count the times we've said that. Jesus here kind of puts a different twist on it. Nothing will be impossible for you. I thought, oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Nothing will be impossible for you. Yeah, yes, that just, yeah. that's just not a promise to every believer, right? right. Uh, I mean, it is, but there's something you have to do to get it. You know what I'm saying. So, it's, it's a promise, but there's something preliminary that, that we have to do. And so, if, if we could give ourselves up to the work of, that God has for us in the world, if we, if, we, if we came in contact with the mountains and, and the devils that are to be cast away and cast out, we would soon understand how much we need great faith and how much we really need prayer. We don't live in that type of a society yet, but it's most likely coming. Well, we're going to need great power, great faith, great prayer lives. We're going to have to have it. And we can probably thank the Lord that we don't have, haven't lived in that kind of a society yet because we're not strong enough spiritually. So Jesus is our life. He's the life of our faith. It is his life in us that makes us strong and ready to believe. The dying to self, does that have a big part to do with it? Die to self. That, 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 that much prayer implies for us, a, a closer union to Christ. If I'm going to get, get more of Christ in me, more of self has to go out. And so the spirit of faith then will come in with its power. So faith needs prayer for its full growth. So the second thing is, we took, so we know that, we know that prayer, uh, faith needs prayer, prayer needs fasting. So because of the, the, the negative effect of the body, the, the, the sin nature upon the spirit, prayer needs fasting for its full growth. Okay. Prayer needs fasting. Prayer is the, is, is the one hand with which we grasp the invisible, and fasting is the other hand with which we let go of I think I said that wrong first, the visible. So prayer is the one hand which we grasp the invisible. Fasting is the other hand that lets go of the visible. So grab the promises of God and let go of those things that are hindering. Let go of those things. Fast, okay? Fasting is vital. So in, in nothing are we more closely connected with the world of sense than in, with our, our need and our enjoyment of food. Right? Don't we enjoy eating? Amen. Okay. We, we, we need, but we need it as well. We need to eat. So what was, what was Adam and Eve tempted with? Food. Okay. Fruit. What was Jesus tempted with? The first thing, bread. Okay, Man, isn't fresh baked bread just smell heavenly? Yeah, yes, it does. Okay, <laughs> but Jesus triumphed in fasting, didn't he? He triumphed. And so can we. The body has been redeemed to be a temple. To be whose temple? Holy Spirit. Our body has been redeemed to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. In body as well as in spirit, the Bible says that we are to glorify God 
in eating and in drinking, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. If I can glorify God in my eating and drinking, I can also um, not glorify him. If, if it, if it, so we have to be careful with that because we could, that's where you can become a glutton. You know? there, there are many believers to whom this eating for the glory of God has not yet become a spiritual reality. The first thought suggested by Jesus' words in regard to fasting and prayer is that only in a life of moderation and self-denial will there be sufficient heart and strength to pray much. That's important. Self-denial and, and mo- life of moderation. So, sorrow and anxiety cannot eat. Right? Have you ever been through those times where you've been just times of sorrow, you're not hungry? Or times of anxiousness? You, I mean, you're just overwhelmed with, with worry? You cannot eat? Something has happened, and it's just on your mind. I'm not hungry. Then on the other hand, a joyous occasion, <laughs> man, you can chow down, right? You, I mean, you, know, you know, go to a wedding or whatever, that type of stuff. And so our, our, we, we celebrate with our feasts, with eating and so forth. But there, there are many, there may come times of intense desire when it's strongly felt how the, how the body and its appetite still hinder the spirit and its battle with the powers of darkness. So a need is, is felt to keep it subdued. We, we are creatures of our senses. Our minds are helped by what comes to us in, in a concrete form. So fasting then helps to express or deepen or, or confirm the resolution. You know what? Lord, I am. You know how many times? Lord, I would probably say, Lord, I will sacrifice anything. Okay. How about Nagoya? <laughs> okay. All right. I had to throw a restaurant name out there. Um, are you willing to sacrifice food? Well, almost. Yeah. Lord, I am willing to sacrifice anything, even myself, to attain the kingdom of God. I'm willing to do that. And Jesus, who himself fasted and sacrificed, knows to value and to accept and to reward with spiritual power the soul, the person, the individual, who is ready to give up everything for Christ. And so through prayer and fasting, I think that's where the rubber meets the road because words are cheap. Words are cheap. But I tell you, when you spend time in prayer and fasting, isn't that a sign you mean business? Your heart is finally there. When you can start spending time in prayer, however much it is, if it's zero today, start with five minutes. Increase your prayer life, bottom line. When, when we do that, the Lord knows we're serious. And, and we know we're serious. Because oftentimes we say things that we think we're serious, right? I think I'm serious. Well, then really do it. Well... I'd rather just think I'm serious. <laughs> We're really not serious. So prayer reaches out to God, reaches for God, and for the unseen. Fasting is letting go of everything that can be seen and touched. Let it go and spend time with the Lord. So some believers imagine that everything that is not positively forbidden and sinful is permissible to them. So they try to retain as much of I hear people say it. I want to live as close to the world as I can and still be saved. I don't think that's the attitude the Lord's looking for. We need, to, we need to refrain from the world as much as possible with all of its property and materialism and its enjoyments. So the truly consecrated believer is like a soldier going in, into battle carrying what? Only what is necessary. Isn't that what a soldier carries? He's not taking a microwave oven with him. It's not necessary. He takes what is necessary. And are we not likened as soldiers? You read Timothy, he likens us as soldiers. And we need to take only what is necessary. And once free of all this unnecessary weight, a person is easily capable of, of combating sin then. 
So afraid of becoming entangling with the affairs of the worldly life, the person then tries to lead a, a Nazarite life as one specially set apart for the Lord in his service. And without a, a voluntary separation, even from what is lawful, because can't there be some things that are, you know, it's not sinful, but it can be a hindrance? And we often look at things, well, it's not sinful. I can, you know, I can, you know. But we also have a life of moderation. And so we often say, well, it's not sinful, it's okay. Do you know you, you, can, you can fill your life up with non-sinful things 24 hours a day? All of a sudden, these non-sinful things become what? Sin. Because they've come between you and God. And so, with, without voluntary separation, even from what is lawful, we will not attain power in prayer. And I want to attain power in prayer. So I need to get rid of a lot of things. Power comes only through fasting and through prayer. Jesus tells us that prayer, and we're going to pray here real quick, is a path to faith, and strong faith can cast out devils. He tells us if you have faith, nothing will be impossible for who? You. That's a key thing. If you have faith, nothing is impossible for you. So let's, let's take that tonight. And let that encourage us to pray a whole lot more, much more. Because I believe, I believe the prize is worth the price. Don't you? The prize is worth the price. So let's give up everything to follow Christ in the path that he opens up to us. Pray much, fast if you need to, do anything you must so neither the body nor the world can hinder you. In, in, in the work that God has for us. Talk to God in prayer so that we can become the people of faith that he wants us to be. We're going to spend some time in just uh, some singing here. Mark's going to lead us in some songs, some prayer. We want to pray for uh, Henry, your brother Dan's wife, which is Debbie Walmsley's father. has cancer, right? We just take her to the hospital. They live in Texas. So let's lift him up. What's his name? Do we know? We don't know. Okay. So let's pray for, for Debbie Wamsley's dad. Let's spend time in prayer for the Lord touch him. Anybody else have a prayer request? Brenda? Okay. All right. Okay. A family in prayer. All right. Anybody else? Barb? Okay. Ken. Okay. Anybody else? Mike. Emma, okay. And she's a 14 year old or 15 year old? Or? Yeah, okay. Okay, keep praying for her. She's the one that had the brain tumor, correct? Okay, we've been praying for her for quite a while. I got something for you to read. Okay. Anybody else? Mary. Okay. All right, let's pray for him. All right, let's stand tonight. Find a place of prayer and and go ahead, Mark, and start you know, just leading us in the chorus. You can stand around the altars and sing. You want to kneel in prayer, kneel where you're at, sit where you're at. Although I just had to stand up. But let, let these words of Jesus sink uh, deep in our hearts tonight. Where he, where he told these, why could we not do this? Because of your unbelief. I don't want to, I don't want to have unbelief. So let that, let that sink in your heart. So let's come and find some, find some place to pray and, and uh, just spend time in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you. Hallelujah.